It's semifinal time. We're down to just four schools who are competing to move on to the final and hopefully take home $1,000 for their school's project graduation. In this semifinal match, we have the Crusaders of John Baps Memorial High School. <music> taking on the Rams of Bangor High School. That's coming up next on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by the Maine Education Association, standing with educators, ensuring their voices, values, and priorities are respected as they continue to teach and support Maine students during the pandemic and beyond. Learn more at MaineEA.org. Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility part of your community. Smart home technology can help prevent a little problem from becoming a big headache. You can ask an independent agent about smart home technology offers from Safety Insurance. We'll help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to High School Quiz Show Maine. I'm Todd Guttner. We've gone from 16 teams, then to eight, and now we're down to four, each hoping to become the season five champion and take home $1,000 for their school's project graduation. In today's semifinal match, we have the Crusaders of John Baps Memorial High School taking on the Rams of Bangor High School. Let's get things started by meeting the players. For John Baps Memorial, we have Quinn, Olivia, Liam, and Sophia with alternates Levi and Sean, and they're coached by Jacob Mattis. And for Bangor, we have Simon, Nate, Reardon, and Fallon, with alternates Maddie and Adam, and coached by Carl Robbins and Susanna Owen. Now the competition has three rounds, a toss-up, a category round, and a lightning round, and we'll start things with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points, and this is the only round with no point deductions for a wrong answer. Players must wait for me to complete the question, and if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given a chance to answer. All right, team, so we ready to roll here? Yes, we got some excitement. We are ready to go. Here's the first question. What Pennsylvania seamstress is usually credited with sewing the first American stars and stripes flag back in 1776? That would be Sophia, John Baps. Betsy Ross. That's right. From the Greek for foundation, what word refers to an idea or assumption that a scientist attempts to prove through tests and experiments? Reardon, Bangor. Hypothesis. You got it. Although it originated in the Middle East, what reed instrument, known for its drowning sa droning sound, is mainly associated with military regiments and traditional music of the Scottish Highlands? Uh, Reardon again. Bagpipes. Bagpipes, yes. What name for people who deface and destroy public property comes from the name of the Germanic tribes who sacked Rome in the year 455? Simon, Bangor. Vandalizing? Or vandal? Will we? We'll take it. Yes, vandals. Uh, up next, we have a picture question, so take a look at the monitor right over here. Name this symbolic flower in Buddhism which represents a person who overcame the pain and sufferings in the material world to become enlightened. Fallon, Bangor. A lotus. A lotus is correct. If a hydraulic mechanical system is based on fluids at rest or in motion, what corresponding word describes a mechanical system based on gases at rest or in motion? Simon Bangor. Combustion. Uh, that's incorrect. John Baps. Pneumatic. Onward. The 2020 Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded for research into what blood-borne virus that infects the liver? Fallon, Bangor. Hepatitis. Hep Do we need to be more specific? Now we got it. That's good. Hepatitis will take it. The law of orbits, the law of areas, and the law of periods are the three laws of planetary motion attributed to whom? Nate, Bangor. Kepler. Kepler is right. 
Uh, up next, we have a video question. So once again, check out the monitor over here. Hello, I'm Senator Susan Collins. I was born in Caribou, which is the Maine's largest county of Aroostook. How many Maine counties border Aroostook County? Simon, Bangor. Four. Four is right. Somerset, Piscataquis, Penobscot, and Washington. Nice job. Uh, the less I know, the better. Maybe a bad philosophy for our show, but it's a successful 2015 single by what band from Australia? Liam, John Babs. Tame Impala. Yeah, you got it. All right, Denali is the tallest mountain in the United States, but which California mountain is the tallest in the contiguous United States? Reardon, Bangor. Mount Whitney. Mount Whitney is right. How would a medieval knight wear a gauntlet? A, around his wrist, a waist, B, over his shoulder, or C, on his wrist? Uh, Simon, Bangor. C. C is right, on the wrist. All right, math question, get ready. A real estate agent receives a 3% commission on the sale price of a house. If she receives $12,660, what was the sale price of the house? Uh, just a little late there, Liam. The answer, $422,000. Were you on that number? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you convinced me there, bud. Uh, what's the two-word title of the 1990 novel by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, subtitled, The Nice and Accurate Prophecies of Agnes Nutter, Witch? Good Omens. Using a pulley with four wheels and four rope segments, how many pounds of force would you need to lift a slab of concrete weighing 120 pounds? Simon Bangor. 30. 30 is right. Wow, that was good. Canada's longest river system is named for what Scottish explorer who led an expedition across North America in 1793, more than a decade before Lewis and Clark? Liam, John Babs. Henry Hudson. Uh, incorrect. Bangor. We got it. Okay, go for it, uh, Simon. Champlain. Uh, incorrect. Alexander Mackenzie. What community service organization let, uh, that builds homes for people in need for, was started by Linda and Millard Fuller in, seven, in 1976? Simon. Habitat for Humanity. That's right. A blunderbuss is a kind of what? A computer, B gun, or C paintbrush? Reardon, Bangor. B gun. B gun is correct. In 1492, Columbus reached Long Island, not in present-day New York State, but in what archipelago whose out islands include Andros, Bimini, and Cat Island? Fallon, Bangor. The Caribbean. Uh, nope, incorrect. Go ahead, Olivia. Bahamas. Bahamas, nice job. What geological formation in Wyoming became infamous because of a bribery scandal involving oil drilling contracts during the Warren G. Harding administration. Uh, Simon Bangor. Badlands. Incorrect. John Babs. Uh, Sophia. Old Faithful. Uh, teapot Dome is the correct answer. All right, another math question. Get your thinking hats on. A plane travels 3,444 miles between Paris and Montreal. Flying against the wind, the trip takes seven hours. Flying with the wind, it takes six hours. If the direction of the wind is the only factor in the difference in times, what is the speed of the wind? Liam, John Babs. 40 miles per hour. Incorrect. Bangor. Simon. 3,444 miles an hour. Answer is 41 miles per hour. So close, Liam. I didn't so carry the close. one. I didn't carry the one. <laughs> Next time, note to self, carry the one. All right. What name, which might come from German words for oath and fellowship, refers French Protestants who left France because of religious persecution in the 17th century? Sophia. The John. Jesuits? Uh, nope, incorrect. Bangor. Go ahead, Reardon. Huguenots. You got it. You got it, Huguenots. Uh, which water bird figures prominently in The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge? Sophia? The albatross. 
the albatross, yes. The Republic of Guinea holds the world's largest reserves of what ore from which aluminum is derived? Fallon, Bangor. Tin. Uh, incorrect. John Babs, take a shot and go for it, Liam. Iron. Uh, no, the answer is bauxite. Bauxite. Next question. The first woman elected to the U.S. Congress was Jeanette Rankin, who won her seat in 1917 and represented what western state that has just one at-large congressional district? Fallon, Bangor. Wyoming. Incorrect. John Babst. Liam. California. Uh, incorrect. Montana. A loose head prop and a tight head prop are players on the offensive front line for a team playing what sport? Liam, bad job apps. Rugby. Rugby's right. Ooh, okay, that's the end of round one with a score of John Babst, 50, Bangor, 130. Don't go away. We have lots more game to come, and we'll meet the teams when we get back. It's time for the question that's not worth any points, but sometimes a lot in entertainment value. It's our slightly silly question, and this evening's question is this. Imagine you've discovered a new chemical element that's soon to be added to the periodic table. What would you name it? We're going to start over here with John Bapst. Quinn, you go first. Todd, I would probably name it Quinium because I'm self-centered. <laughs> um, I don't know that that's a great quality, <laughs> but it was good humor. I love it. All right, Olivia, you're up. I went for Nemonium. Because Why? Nemo is no one, and I think that's oh. funny to name an element after nothing. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. All right, Liam, what do you got for me today? I, again, I take these questions so seriously. Yeah. Um, I was thinking on it, and I think that it's time. The world is ready. Iron 2. Iron 2? <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo? Yeah, but that's in smaller print. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Nice one, Liam. Sophia. I would go with Sontimium after the late Stephen Sontime. I'm unfamiliar. The you composer and lyricist. Who, a lyricist. And composer. Yes. Okay. Any, give me a famous song. Sweeney Todd, Into the Woods. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know. Into the Woods? <laughs> Wait. Uh, like the Taylor Swift Into the Woods? Or is oh, that gosh. Out of the Woods? <laughs> Something in the Woods. I don't know. It's Taylor Swift. Anyway, thank you, Sophia. On to Bangor, Simon. I would name the element uh, Nakamodium after Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, because ah. Bitcoin is awesome. Do you, do you own any Bitcoin? Of course I do. It's the best currency in the world. Did you buy it before it tanked a few uh, Of course months. I did, but I keep buying dollar cost averaging. <laughs> All right, you're it's dollar cost currency. averaging. Well done, Simon. You're going to make some serious dough someday. All right, Nate. Uh, I think I would name it Mathematicium, just because I'm a huge fan of mathematics. All right, yeah, um, okay, let's go with it. <laughs> I don't have much to add on that one. I'm not a huge one, but anyway, Reardon. Let's go with Elementium. Elementium, very It generic. has to epitomize all of the research we have done thus far. Okay. Plus, I'm lazy, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first thing that popped into your head, probably. Yeah. Uh, Fallon, why don't you wrap this up for us? I would name it Spockium because I love Star Trek. Ah, uh, you're a huge Trekkie. <laughs> yes. Wait, can you do the... You know, of course. You can. <laughs> All right, cool. Nice. All right. Uh, we'll take a quick break to set up for the category round, and that's coming up next. Stay with us. Next up, it's the category round with the following choices. Power of 10, their day in court, so much drama, making a list, scientific shorthand, and isn't she great? Now, each category has five questions with increasing point values. Players, listen up. You must wait for me to finish the question before you buzz in. You can confer with your teammates, but once you buzz in, you're no longer allowed to do that, and we'll need your answer. And like in the toss-up round, if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given a chance to answer it. Uh, John Bapps, you are trailing right now, so you have control of the board. Where are we going to lead off with? Let's do so much drama for 10. So much drama. Questions are about plays and musicals. Yay. We got some happy campers <laughs> over here with that. All right, here's the question. Which Arthur Miller play uses the Salem witch trials as a metaphor for the Red Scare in Hollywood in the 1950s? Uh, Sophia, John Bass. The Crucible. The Crucible, yeah. This clearly is going to be your category. What would you like? Same category. <laughs> Same category. So much drama for 15. Grow for me. Feed Me and Suddenly Seymour are songs from what stage musical with a giant plant? 
Uh, Liam, John Babs. Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, you got it. You stole it from your teammate. <laughs> uh, where do you like to go, John Babs? Same thing? Yeah, we'll keep running her. Yeah, so much drama, 20. Having opened on Broadway in December 2019, the stage musical Jagged Little Pill is based on the music of what Canadian singer-songwriter? <laughs> Sophia. Morissette. Yes, Alanis Morissette, one of the best ever. Same All right, category. John, yep, same, so <laughs> much <laughs> drama, 25. <laughs> The full-length play most widely produced by American high schools in what romantic comedy by John Carini first produced at the Portland Stage Company in 2004? Uh, nope, we didn't get it in there. Uh, the answer is all, uh, almost Maine. Almost Maine. Um, you still have control, though, John Baps. Let's finish out the category. All right, so much drama for 30. To wrap it up, according to the title of a play by Samuel Beckett, who are Vladimir and Estragon waiting for? <laughs> Sophia. Godot. <laughs> Godot, you got it. Nice <laughs> job in that category, <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> you guys still have control. Sorry, there's no more <laughs> drama. <laughs> Where do we want to go? <laughs> I'm scared of scientific shorthand, but if you really feel good about it, we can. <laughs> Let's try, isn't she great for 10? Okay. <laughs> Apparently she doesn't, Liam. All right, questions about Catherine the Great. Catherine's art collection was the basis for the Hermitage Museum based in what city that is Russia's second largest by population? Uh, Sophia, John St. Baps. Petersburg. St. Petersburg, yes. John Baps, you still have control. Let's keep going, isn't she great? Isn't she great for 15? Expanding the Russian Empire in 1783, Catherine annexed what peninsula that was transferred to Ukraine in 1954 and that the Russian Federation controversially annexed again in 2014? Reardon, Bangor. Crimean Peninsula? Yep, that's right. Okay, Reardon, where do you want? Let's go with power of 10. Power of 10. All the answers to these questions are 10 letter words. In what fictional place does Alice meet the Marsh Hare and the Queen of Hearts? Reardon. Wonderland. Wonderland, yes. Still yours. Uh, let's go with scientific shorthand for 10. Scientific shorthand for 10. These questions involve scientific acronyms. DNA is in your genes. It's also the most commonly used scientific acronym recognized by scientists in the general public. What does DNA stand for? Reardon again. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Yes, that's a long one. You got it. All right, uh, Reardon, it's still yours. Let's stick with it for uh, scientific shorthand for 15. Thank you. You reminded me there. Scientific shorthand 15. The CERN research facility in Geneva, Switzerland is home to the world's biggest, most powerful particle accelerator. Scientists call it LHC, which is short for what? Nate. Large Hadron Collider. Uh, that's correct. Nice job. All right, Nate, it's yours. Uh, let's stick with it. Scientific shorthand for 20. Scientific shorthand for 20. Scientists have used the Carl G. Jansky VLA radio telescope to study ice on Mercury and microquasars in the Milky Way galaxy. What does VLA stand for? <phone rings> Liam, John Bapst. Very large attempt. <laughs> Which is what you just did. Bangor, would you like to try? Uh, the answer, very large array. Oh, so close. Um, it's Bangor's turn still. Uh, scientific shorthand for 25. Scientific shorthand 25. The first human cells to be grown in vitro successfully in a laboratory are known as Hella cells, named for what woman who became the unwitting source for them back in 1951? <laughs> Olivia, job apps. Henrietta Lacks. Yes, you nailed it. All right, your turn again. Your turn again. Oh! <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we gotta finish the category yeah. again. Oh. We don't have, we to. have to. We'll do a scientific shorthand. Scientific for shorthand for 30. Okay. If you wanted to edit DNA, you might use a recently developed technology that scientists call CRISPR, an acronym for what highly descriptive but very long name? Uh, I was late, and you're going to make me say it now. <laughs> Clustered, regularly, interspaced, short, palindromic repeats. Whoever was about to buzz in, did you have it? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, All right. Um, John Baps, it's still your turn, though. Isn't she great, isn't she great for 20? Okay, isn't she okay. great for 20? During Catherine's reign, the Russian colony at Three Saints Bay 
was founded in what is now which U.S. state? Reardon, Bangor. Alaska. You got it. And now it's your turn. Let's go with power of 10 for 15. Power of 10 for 15. If you sneeze in Munich, someone might respond with what word that means health in German? <phone rings> Sophia? Gesundheit. Gesundheit, yes. It's back to you guys, John Baps. Let's do power of 10 for 20. Power of 10 for 20. In a 1984 movie, Arnold Schwarzenegger plays Cyberdyne Systems Model 101, a T-800 cyborg better known by what name? Liam, John Babs. The Terminator. The Terminator. Yes. All right, John Babs, go ahead, Liam. Power of 10, 25. Power of 10 for 25. A certain type of four-part a cappella singing is named for what place of business where a man might get a shave and a haircut? <phone rings> Olivia? Barbershop. Barbershop, yes. Your turn. Let's do power of 10 for 30. Power of 10 for 30. What's the title of the famous Edward Hopper painting showing four people in a diner long after dark. Nate Bangor. Nighthawk. Nighthawk, yes, nice job. Um, Bangor, your turn. They're oh, sorry. Um, they're, day court. they're day in court for 10. Okay, they're day in court for 10. These questions involve famous American legal cases. What is the name of the enslaved man who unsuccessfully sued for his freedom in a case that went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court in 1857. Reardon, Bangor. Dred Scott. Yep, you got it. Your turn. Let's continue with the category. Uh, they're doing court for 15. All right, for 15. In 1925, a Tennessee high school science teacher stood trial for the crime of teaching the theory of evolution in class. What was that teacher's name? <phone rings> Sophia. Brown. Uh, incorrect. Bangor, you want to try this? John Scopes. Uh, Bangor with control still. Let's continue with their day in court for 20. Their day in court 20. In a unanimous 1974 decision, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that what sitting U.S. president could not use executive privilege as an excuse to withhold evidence in a criminal trial. Simon Bangor. Nixon. Nixon is right. You still have control. Uh, let's go with making a list for 10, please. Making a list for 10. Questions about places on the UNESCO World Heritage List. First question, the highest concentration of Neolithic burial mounds in England can be found at what scientifically sophisticated circle of megaliths in Wilshire? Simon. Stonehenge. Stonehenge, yes. Uh, let's continue with, with making a list for 15, please. For 15, in 2013, the site of Palmyra, the ancient city of Aleppo, and four other sites in what country were placed on UNESCO's list of World Heritage Sites in danger? Uh, Liam, John Baps. Greece. Greece incorrect. Bank. Reardon. Syria. Yeah, you got it. Nice job. Your turn still. Uh, let's continue with making a list for 20. Making a list for 20. Serengeti National Park and Kilimanjaro National Park are UNESCO World Heritage Sites in which East African country? Reardon again. Tanzania. Tanzania. Nice again. Uh, let's go with uh, making a list for 25. Making a list for 25. Built during the reign of Mughal, Emperor Shah Jahan, the Shalimar Gardens, are a world heritage site in what city that's the capital of Punjab province and the second most populous in Pakistan? The answer is Lahore. Lahore. Okay, that's the end of round two. We have a score of John Baps at 170. Bangor, 305. Everything could change, though, in the lightning round. Sit tight. We will be right back. Okay, we're heading into the final 90 seconds of gameplay, the lightning round. Players, you can buzz in any time. You get 20 points for each correct answer. Incorrect answers will cost you 20 points as well. The other team will not get the chance to answer the question. The clock is set. Here we go with the lightning round. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest in Washington, D.C. is the address of what? The White House. So, the White House is right. John Bapp, Sophia. Amylase in saliva breaks down what complex carbohydrates into simple sugars? Simon Bangor. Starch. Yes. Abraham Lincoln and Jefferson Davis both were born in which southern state? Sophia. South Carolina. That's incorrect. Kentucky. After nine seasons with the Panthers, what quarterback joined the New England Patriots in 2020? Quinn, John Baps. Cam Newton. Yes, Cam Newton. 
The Analex contains ideas and sayings attributed to what Chinese philosopher? Liam, John Confucius. Back. Confucius, yes. In 1867, Al Alfred Nobel received a patent for what explosive? Liam Dynamite. again. Dynamite, yes. The Mexican street food, elote, is a Spanish word for what? Corn on the cob. What Mark Twain character gets lost in the cave with Becky Thatcher? Tom Sawyer. One of the world's longest coral reefs is off the coast of Eden. Uh, this would be Simon. Great Barrier Reef. Incorrect, Red Sea. What 1651 Thomas Hobbes work shares a name with a sea monster? From, uh, Simon again. Leviathan. Leviathan, yes. The national flag of Cyprus depicts what sort of branches that symbolize? Liam, John Laurel. Um, one more time. Laurel. Laurel's incorrect, it was olive, olive. All right, that's the end of the lightning round. Our winning team, Bangor, at 325 points. They will be moving on to the championship. Our runner-up, John Baps, had 210 points. Just want to say, John Baps, you guys were a lot of fun this season. Congratulations to both teams. Be sure to tune in next time for our second semifinal match. And thanks for watching High School Quiz Show Maine. We'll see you again next time. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by the Maine Education Association, standing with educators ensuring their voices, values, and priorities are respected as they continue to teach and support Maine students during the pandemic and beyond. Learn more at mainea.org. Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. Whether you prefer email, texting, or a live person, Safety Insurance is available to help you file a claim and pay your bill. Safety Insurance, we'll help you manage life storms. Learn more at safetyinsurance.com. And by viewers like you, thank you.